and go for it. Okay, hi friends. Um, sorry, I don't have the showgirl announcer voice that Brie has, but that's just not my thing. So I'm not gonna pretend it is. Um, but bunch of announcements for this week and wanted to share a super quick thing I've been doing that's been helping me. So um, one, the last day to get discounted summit tickets is Wednesday, the last day of January. So if you have not got a summit ticket, you need to get a summit ticket because then you get to hang out with me and that sounds really fun, just saying. Um, no, in all seriousness, you guys, summit is gonna be awesome. I had, like, I cannot even explain to you the FOMO that I had last year because we had already made committed plans before I even started Beachbody coaching. And then I found out about summit. I was like, Let's cancel our plans. Anyway, FOMO is real. Just go get your ticket, long story short. Um, team Cup, we still have a couple of spots to get another team filled so if you don't have a team cup team already um reach out to danielle it's a really awesome opportunity to not only grow your business but just to get to know some people on this team more um closely and work with new people so if you're not on a team cup team chat with danielle um and then in february a couple of things that are going on um i'm gonna start managing the calendar and we're potentially Danielle's super excited about that. Um, so I'm gonna have that ready for February 1st, but we're probably going to switch out a few of our normally scheduled activities for Team Cup related activities. So instead of us getting together as a huge team, we'll get together as Team Cup teams. So look out for that on the calendar. Um, and we also need some people to help with the accountability groups in February. So, um, there are a number of girls who are not doing 80 day obsession and there's like another accountability group for them so there's tons of scripts and resources but if you want to manage a week in that group um, again everything's done you can schedule it all in advance it takes like an hour to set up it's not a ton of a time commitment um, but we want to make sure we're loving on ladies who are not doing 80 day obsession for various reasons so if you have some time in february and you can um help out with that that would be superb again reach out to Jan danielle and let us know um okay shout out a couple of shout outs and recognition and then my tip thing and then we'll move on um i have to shout out claire because she rocked it in disney um posting all over social media like met someone doing 80 day obsession in the gym which is awesome i like want to meet someone doing it in my gym at the hotel too so now I'm like, keep looking out for people. So thanks for the inspiration, girl. You did an awesome job. She posted tons of great pics of food all over Disney that were like very meal plan approved, clean, like awesome. So I hope you had a great trip and I can't wait to hear all about it. Um, but you totally rocked it. And then the thing that I wanted, oh, Shannon, I see your screen. Good job. Um, the thing that I wanted to share that has been that I've been doing that I think has been working that is just, I think a good like reminder. I think Shannon might touch on this a little bit, but um, in one of the workouts a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, Autumn said during a really hard thing, she said, relax your face, which sometimes in meetings, I sort of sit like this or I'm like, <sighs> like, and I get like sort of like mean faced. Um, and so I've been trying to tell myself a few times a day, like relax your face. Like if you literally just like let your face sort of hang a little bit, it is amazing. So wanted to just share that because it's really been helping me not only at work, but during workouts. Um, so if you feel like you've been tight, I think we're all just super busy. Just take a minute and like relax your face. Like I, I'm pondering setting alarms on my phone to remind myself to relax my face. You guys know I have a bazillion alarms and that's my jam, but um, it's awesome. So relax your face. Any other um, recognition or things people want to shout out? Day 15, we made it. Just saying. Woo! <laughs> All right, thanks, Liz. Um, so I wanted Shannon, so just so you guys know, Shannon's in Puerto Rico, so talk about commitment right now. She's there for work. And I wanted Shannon to get on and do the team call tonight because she is somebody who kind of um, has found her way, but also lost her way and come back. 
So I think we can all relate to that at some point in our coaching journey where we just, we feel really, really good. You know, there's times in 80 day obsession right now where we're on track and we're on point, but what happens at the end of the 80 days? So I really wanted to get someone like Shannon on here speaking to you guys because she has hit diamond and held it for six weeks. She has hit success club multiple months in a row. She has gotten freaking bomb results, but she's also veered off course and she's had life obstacles that come her way and now she's getting back into it. So I think it's so relatable, you know, post fall, post holidays, where we're all in this mentality of how do we make this work? And I just think that she's somebody who takes things and learns them and applies them, which is everything we need to do with our business, right? Like you can learn a million different videos, but if you do nothing with it, it doesn't really matter. So I'm really excited to hear from her. And also I wanted you guys to get to know her a little bit more. I know some of you know her, but I know we have some new faces on the team and I just thought it'd be good to mix somebody else in the bunch and give you a different perspective on things. So, um, Shannon, I'm going to shut up and let you take the rein. I'll unmute you. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Not very technology savvy as you guys will learn, but it's okay. We're making it work. Um, thanks so much for having me, you guys and your patience. And I hope this stays up the whole time. Um, so I, me and Danielle, if you don't know our history, both kind of grew up in the same town or area through high school, but never actually knew each other and, you know, connected through this community. And I think, you know, what, what I've, I've always kind of, uh, tether and umbilical cord, however you want to describe it. You know, ever since I found this this area, you know, there's something about it that's kind of always held and connected to me. And I think that that's unique to everyone, right? What you're going to find that really connects you. But for me, it was, and I'll talk a little bit about all these different things, but ultimately it was that support and that even almost a soundboard element, right? Because I think that we all know this is not a bubble. Nothing about this journey is just isolated to itself. It touches every part of our lives and that's how it's successful when you're willing to not just compartmentalize and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to keep doing everything else the same, but maybe I'll add this workout in and put my veggies in the screen container, right? It's a, it's a mindset. It's a mindset shift. It's a scheduling shift. It's a commitment shift. It's a perspective shift. So, um, just a little bit on my history and kind of the background and some of the challenges that I personally encounter, you know, I am a little bit unique in my lifestyle choices and journey with this and that it's very much for me, my biggest challenge is my work life balance. Um, my, my job is very demanding and has very unpredictable hours and I'm usually working when everyone's playing. And so <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's a long, it's a, it's a very difficult industry street to work in and and fill your own cup and take care of yourself um, so I think that that's what I found through this journey is is a community and a, a path a journey an actual roadmap to be able to still do what I love and not totally burn myself out by the time I'm 35 and then when I found the the gratitude and the perspective that comes from sharing that path or that option with other people, that's what really hooked me. Um, so I, I'm, I've got a few slides for you guys. I just kind of want to go through, please feel free to like jump in, throw something in the chat box. If you have questions, um, I'm going to kind of just start with some of my big bullet points. Cause you know, as Danielle mentioned, I'm by no means a master coach with all the secret. This is how you get the perfect invite. You know, for me, this journey has been more about my own mental mindset and how I approach it. So those are kind of some of the things that I'm going to share with you guys tonight. So the journey, finding your path in a world full of detours, right? For me, this was, this was a big part of, of this community for me is really kind of starting to not necessarily tunnel vision, but being able to kind of focus and keep myself on track and be in a community where other people are interested in doing that, right? I think when we are around other people who have goals that they're working towards, that's an infectious energy. Just like when you're around other people who are constantly negative, it can have that same effect. Um, so a, a big part of whenever you're kind of taking on something like this or a new lifestyle or new decisions is, you know, 
assessing what those detours might be. You know, for me, it's that moment of, oh, well, I should go, go leave now and do this workout, but let me answer these two emails, right? And, and that detour in this moment seems like the most important thing, but it's learning and discovering what in your life are your specific detours. Um, what are the things that are going to take you off your journey that you have to be aware of? And this community, I'm going to say it over and over again, you know, you sh the, the best way to overcome that is to share it, right? You know, I, I say this even with my staff when we work on, you know, you're not allowed to say the word um. And the only way you're going to learn how to not say the word um is if everybody else around you calls you out when you say um, because you've told them that's your big thing, right? So we, by sharing what our detours are and what we struggle with in this journey, we, we, it just builds us all up because I'm sure someone else might be out there not saying that that's their detour too, right? So um, that's slide one. Let's see if slide two comes up. Maybe down, left, right. Perfect. So <laughs> what is the first step in taking that journey, right? How do you take that first step on the asphalt? And ultimately it's, you got to turn around and look in the mirror. You know, it's, it's super easy to look everywhere else. And I'm sure you've heard it a million times. It's not a complicated concept, but you, you have to fill your own cup. And I think even more importantly than that is not just because, you know, then you can pour into another's cup, but Think about spring water, right? If you're filling your cup with good spring water and passing it along to the next person, you're passing along that best next cup of water. Versus if we're halfway just filling our cup or maybe kind of, you know, sort of figuring ourselves out, we're, we're almost doing a disservice to the people that we're trying to help because you're not giving them that full version of yourself. So it's not, it's not just a luxury, it's an essential. And I think it's one of those things for me that you can hear it over and over and over, but until you really feel that difference of what it is to give with a full cup versus to give with a three quarter, three quarter full cup, that's, that's when that really starts to set in. So, you know, you hear Autumn say it, or you hear the nutrition say it, right? You know, the, that when you push through that last level or that last rep, you know, that's, that's that feeling you want to come back to. And it's something you have to live to really stick with you, at least in, in terms of my learning style. Um, Let's check my notes and make sure. So it's almost like not skipping your foundation, right? You're not you're not gonna have that strong building that's built on sand. You need that concrete, and and you got to figure out what that is for you, right? You know, maybe your cup is ADD obsession, but maybe next month your cup is three week yoga retreat, right? It's it's not everybody. Everybody doesn't have the same cup, you know. Some of us want a latte. Some of us want a cappuccino. You got to figure out what your version of that cup is, and and don't be you know, ashamed if it's not the same thing that everybody else on Instagram is doing, right? Because if anything, you have an opportunity because you're not selling the same cup that everybody else is selling. So there's somebody out there that's looking for your version of the cup. And if anything, nobody's provided it to them yet. So there's your market, right? Own it and just kind of take it on. Um, and I, I have found too, personally in my journey that that there's a, there's a listening and balance within ourselves that the more that you fill that cup, the better you get at listening and the easier it becomes to fill that cup, right? So maybe that's tough at, tough at first to kind of find those things that you need to get in that mind space or to physically feel good or to, you know, mentally walk into that conversation with that person. And, and the more you do that, the more you learn yourself internally and what those things are. And that makes that process, at least personally for me, I found much more efficient the more you do it, right? Just like the more you buy the bag of Cheetos, the more you know where it is in the aisle. I mean, that's that's our neurological system. We we support those neurological connections if you want to get on a biological level, right? The more you take that path in that thought process, if it's a negative thought or a positive thought, if it's an action, you're, you're building the strength in that neural connection, right? So we want to build the good ones. Um, and then allow for that grace, right? If you end up in the Cheeto aisle, whatever, like move on. The more you think about the fact that you were just in the Cheeto aisle, you're just filling, you're, you're just filling an aisle guilt nerve connection, right? So while yes, this is the goal, it's not helping our cup anymore to when we, we have that falter to then beat ourselves up even more about it, right? If, if anything, maybe what our cup needs in that moment is a little bit of grace. It's, it's not always going to be the same thing. And that's what I got for that one. Let's go next one. All right. So once you've got your cup, 
keep calm and own it, right? It's your cup. If it's got flamingos on it and it's green, let it be your cup. Own the flamingos, own the green, you know? Half my wardrobe is black. I, I live in Charleston. That doesn't mean I'm going to wear pink and green because that's not my cup, right? So it, it's the, the more you practice filling that cup up and feeling that feeling and the confidence in the sense of, hey, this is right. This is good. Good things happen when I'm in this place. The easier it is to own that because you gain this confidence in knowing if you tell somebody else to do the same thing, you can genuinely sit there and say, hey, I I've seen improvement with this. I know this works because I've been through it and I've done it. And again, you know, if anything, the less you see of that similar cup elsewhere, the more we need your cup. That means that there's not your cup out there and other people need to see it. So don't, don't stress about what specifically that is. Just own it. Own whatever it is and, and be a part of it, right? And share it unapologetically. If, if it's coming from a genuine place, you don't have to second guess yourself when it's going up there, right? And if you look at a lot of the coaches, if we're you know, bringing this back to a more specific business element, a lot of those really unique accounts, at least that I know that I love to follow, are the ones that are completely different than some of the others, right? If you look at Trey Baylor, I mean, he's cursing up a storm. He's got a totally unique approach, right? Same with, I don't know if it was you, Danielle, or somebody posted the other day a great little snippet from... Um, I'm not going to remember her name. She travels, Amy, Amy. But she, you know, talked about, she had a team call and she was talking about how, you know, her coach initially that she was working with when she dropped an F-bomb in there was like, oh gosh, don't do that. You're going to scare your clients away. You know, everyone's going to freak out. You can't curse on the internet. And then she saw, you know, this other coach who's strategically placing those F-bombs maybe the way she would naturally talk. And she was drawn to it. And it, it gives you that confidence to know, hey, if I'm drawn to this because it's something that relates to me, that's how other people are going to feel about you, Right. So yes, there is a lot you can learn from how people have done that wheel in the past, but don't be afraid to kind of give your wheel its own little detail, right? And life's messy. It's ugly. It's sweaty in our business. So don't be, don't fall into that trap that we all see on Instagram of the, of the perfectly filtered and the, the glistening versus the sweating. And you know, that's great. And if you glisten, great, then own the glisten, you know, whatever it is, but, but let it, let it be all levels of that. You know, I, I, that's something I struggle with too, right? Because when you want to put it on the internet, when you feel great, it's hard to kind of get that motivation to put it on the internet when you do falter, you do fail. And that's something I have to try and constantly check myself with. But I think that when we have had, when I've personally had that, that moment where I've really put something out there that is kind of not so pretty, the, the response is so much stronger, right? And maybe you only get like one or two and not everyone and their mom is liking it, but those one or two connections are worth those thousand likes on that pretty picture of your dog with the tree behind it, right? And, and that dog and tree, that might be your life. Put it in there. I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying don't, don't hold back when there's not that, that pretty element to share. Um, and your tribe's going to feel that energy. You know, we talk about it all the time. You, you attract the tribe that you give out. So that's Amy Silverman. Thank you, Danielle. Yes. Thank you. And, um, yeah, work for the cause, not the applause. Yeah. yeah. One liners. I love it. Um, so yeah, you know, make sure that, that, cause you know, ultimately what's going to happen, right? Sure. You might attract all those shiny people who like those shiny things, but what happens when it gets real? And then you now have to kind of reassess is now I'm, I'm kind of with these people that maybe aren't my tribe, right? So don't, don't do yourself that disservice in the beginning, because when you start out with that genuine element, it might be a little harder to kind of build that traction. But, you know, especially in my position, you know, I've, I've been through something where, you know, I was talking to a lot of people and maybe had this kind of high roller coaster and come down. And now that I'm coming back up, I can tell you every single person that's reaching out to me are the people that I had those genuine genuine connections with, right? They've still been there. They've still been watching. They've still been part of that because me as a person has not changed. Maybe I haven't been as present, but I'm still giving that same vibe because it's that same genuine Shannon, right? And if in that failure, that's me, that's great, but that's me and they're still relating to it. I'm not flipping on the light bulb of this is the beach body version of Shannon. This is the non beach body version of Shannon, right? So I think, I think it's, it's easy with all these applause and shiny things to, it feels like, oh, great, I'm getting all this attraction, this initial immediate satisfaction, right? But when you think about that long game, when you think about the value, it, it really matters in the end, at least in my experience. 
Um, and you have to kind of commit and be able to, you know, it's a commitment to build others up. And it's, you know, you're, you're putting yourself out there and saying, yeah, here, I, I'm willing to be with you. I'm willing to be in this. And that, if that's coming from a genuine place, even if in that commitment process you falter, right, they're going to be much more understanding of that, especially if you share that in a real way. Like, hey, you know, I know we started this together. Let me just tell you, you know, this is what's going on. And that's how I reached out to a lot of the people that I connected with previously. You know, I wasn't like, oh, great, nice, shiny new thing, 80 days. You know, I was like, hey, I, I don't know about you guys, but I've been hibernation for six months. I am so ready for a kick in the ass. Like, who wants to do it with me? Like, I'm not in a place to lead you right now. I'm getting my shit together too. Who, who wants to kind of take this journey? with me right so don't be afraid no matter where you are to share that with the people you're with they will appreciate that you don't have to be the the perfect you know this perfect idol that everything is doing right and that's how you're gonna get them there you're gonna get them there by sharing every element of it because they're gonna have their own failures they're gonna have their own roller coaster and you know what that's the difference between somebody that shuts down and goes away and somebody that's gonna tell and share those things with you right you know even throughout my element Danielle will be like hey this is going on oh yeah let me try. oh I, I loved one shake and I have now failed at this right but you know there's never that like feeling of, you know, I'm never going to speak to you again because the, they, there's not that pressure of if they're not perfect, they can't be in your world because you're not perfect, right? Let's check out. We'll go to the next one. We, all right. I love this one, guys. This one was such, for me, a, a moment of kind of a shift because I, I came into this opportunity for selfish reasons, right? Getting my own life on track and then learning about the coaching opportunity. You know, I, I wanted to kind of tackle some big goals and in, in terms of financials and numbers and all those things, which are still important and great, right? We still have to pay bills, but, um, we ultimately make a living off of what we get and a life by what we give. And that's not something you can ever predict because life is given to you in ways you will never know. And sometimes those ways are small. Sometimes those ways are big and it's a, it's a trust the process moment. Right. But I, I guarantee you that, you know, even those moments, if it's that, you know, work bonus, like I, that was my struggle, right? And that 90 hour week, man, but wait till I get that paycheck. And then you're sitting there looking at it, but you're, you're exhausted. You haven't seen your family or your friends for four weeks. Sure. I'm going to pay an extra credit card bill off this month, but am I, what, what is the point, right? Am I living with that? Now, now what am I going to do? Spend that extra money on nothing. Cause I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I'm just going to sleep in my house and recover from the fact that I haven't eaten or done anything in four days, but work like a crazy person. Right? So we, you know, ultimately in the end, you, you're here to make a life for yourself that you're going to enjoy. And the best way to do that sometimes is, is to give to others what you've received. And that for me was, one, you know, we talk about non-scale victories and I'll talk about this in a little bit. There's non-scale victories for your business too. And this is a great way to see those. What else did I write on here? Sorry, I'm just referring to my notes so I don't forget everything. And hey, the, there's also moments, right, where you kind of have to look at yourself and say, Am I, is this, is this specific path that I've chosen the way that's going to get me to a life? Because there's different ways to work this business, to work this as a lifestyle, to work this in so many ways, right? Someone's life is, it's not, it's a snowflake. Like your life is not somebody else's life. So just as much as you're saying, you know, you have to own that in your own sense, own that in the sense of what life you're trying to work towards as well. Don't try and put that into a cookie cutter of, oh, well, you know, life means diamond or this or that, right? If that's your goal, that's awesome. But just make sure it's a genuine one that's going to bring you that life and that happiness because you don't want to learn that lesson sitting in the chair, looking at that paycheck or whatever it is you thought that goal was. And now you're there and kind of like, is this what I wanted? Right. That's that millionaire syndrome we always hear about, you know, they've worked their whole lives. They're sitting in that pretty mansion, but what, what life have they lived with that? So remember to keep all those things in balance as well. <clears throat> and then I think, let's see, which side did I do this for? Ooh, some whole thing. Sorry. One second. Yeah. One more thing I wanted to say on this one. Um, I just wrote a couple things that for me were non-scale victories in my business that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, one of them was pride. And I don't mean this in the sense of like the, you know, the, the mortal sin. I mean this in the sense of 
you know, when I shut my computer at night or when I finish a conversation, what's that feeling in my stomach? Is that, is that a feeling that I've walked away feeling good about how that interaction just went? You know, or is that something where I'm like, man, I could have given more or, you know, I, I should have shared this or that. So that, that's kind of something you want to think about. How do you feel? Is there that pride in the way you've interacted with that person in the way that you shared your journey in the way that you've been honest about your business or your goals, right? Um, empathy. I think the more that you give, the greater your ability to experience empathy is. And this is, you know, one of those things that relates to every element of our lives, right? It, it gives us perspective. It, it really widens our view and really brings so much into our world when we can empathize with what others are experiencing. It's, you know, it's almost like getting to take a walk in their shoes, getting to live multiple lives because you're taking that moment to kind of sit back and think about what it's like to be that person sitting across from you with the computer, you know? Maybe you're not, you wouldn't react the way that they are to something and it's hard for you to understand, but we never know what people are going through and the more you get to know someone, the more you give of yourself so they feel comfortable to give to you, the more perspectives of other people's lives you're going to have and the better able you are to kind of come from that place of empathy. Like, hey, well, I remember when I was talking to so-and-so a year ago and they experienced this and that and, you know, that, that kind of helped me understand where they were coming from. That sounds kind of similar to what you're going through. And that's all experience and putting ourselves out there and the more interactions you have. And... Confidence. This is definitely a non-scale victory in both fitness and in our interactions with people, right? The, the more you give and you feel that feeling of what it's like to truly have that genuine interaction, that's going to support your confidence in going into it. And you'll have less of that anxiety. There's a, that solidity in the place that you're coming from when you're speaking to people because you, you know it's, it's good for them and you know you're giving genuinely. Great. Let's see what I've got for the next one. The art of anticipation. So this is probably a little bit of my Forbes hospitality element coming out. I apologize for that. But I think that this is really relevant to our business, especially for me in it was always hard for me in social media terms to learn how to give value. And I, I think I, I always interpreted value or I simplified value in my mind as let me throw this recipe out there or let me give them this, you know, motivational quote of the day, which I still do. And I'm not saying that's not a, a giving of value, but I was, I was struggling to find sometimes that genuineness in my value. And the more I started to try and anticipate and, and come from it, from a perspective of, okay, well, maybe if I think about providing value is how can I anticipate what other people might go through as they start this process because it's something I went through or it's something someone else went through, then it's almost like this fun game of trying to predict the future, right? Like, can I go out and throw that solution before they even tell me what the problem is? Can I have them start to think about that before they've just molded over in their mind to the point where now it's this beast and and they can't get over it right because that's that's kind of what we can get in the rut of if if something seems huge and insane and no one else is going through it you know we become our own worst enemy but if we kind of give them those hints like we do with our invites of those anticipation of hey you know this might be hard coming up or you might feel sore with this or you know what what are you going to do on a flight without food you know like those kind of things if you anticipate that those are the elements you're going to go through or other people are going to go through that was a big shift for me recently in trying to create more value in my posts, anticipating the struggles and the things that people are going to come up with. And that takes observation. It takes observation of your own life. It takes observation of what you're seeing in other people. And the best place you can observe is in this community because you've got a whole bunch of people around you that are, that are all in it, right? They're, they're, it's, the, it's the people that are closest to it and they're going to come up with those problems first. It's like our own little personal focus group. And I'll tell you, those are expensive. If you want to know a focus group in the real world, you got to pay a lot of money for it. And this is free. So, you know, take advantage of that. And then once you've got that observation, now it's kind of having that awareness in the situations of how to apply that, right? Because we don't want to just come out and be like, oh, well, you just do this and it's fine. You have to have that awareness of how to deliver that to each person and, and how to deliver that to your tribe, right? Uh, there's that great video when you talk about branding of who is it that you're speaking to. Have that awareness in that delivery because if you were sitting down and listening to someone say that, how would you take that? right? And ultimately it all takes patience because it's a process. And 
people's needs are insane, right? We, we're unpredictable creatures and we might feel one day this week and another way this week. So when you're talking to clients, you're talking to your team members, have patience with them, right? You got to have patience with yourself and you have to be a little adaptable. The same strategies that, you know, we used even a year ago when I was first introduced to this business is not the strategies we're using now right? We, we have to kind of observe and anticipate where people are going to be, anticipate where they're going to see things, how they're taking information. And then we had to be patient with learning that shift and learning all of those new processes. So just like you're giving yourself grace in your own journey, be sure to give that grace to the people that you're helping as well. Let's see. <clears throat> Imagery and visualization. You don't have to necessarily live their lives to do it, right? Sometimes it just takes a little imagination. And I think that another big thing for me that I realized is I never considered myself a creative person. I have horrible handwriting. My sister dressed me all through high school. I am not good at the girly, crafty, pretty things. Like I, I don't, I, even Instagram for me is a struggle in terms of making things pretty. You know, I'd look at people's houses and they're just taking a picture of their TV and their, their pictures are all straight and they've got candles and cute little, you know, whatever's. And you take a picture of my house, my nephew's like things in the corner, my dog's doing whatever, half the pillows don't match, right? Whatever. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, if you, if you're not relating, if you're not the same person as that person on the other side of the screen, but there's certain part of your lives that connect, visualize and imagine those other parts of their lives, right? You don't have to necessarily be that same person. That doesn't, the tribe isn't a bunch of clones, right? There, there just has to be a few things that connect you and that, that speak to you. That doesn't mean we're all the same person. So, so once you kind of learn that patience, you can start to kind of use those experiences to maybe just imagine or try and place yourself in their shoes. And that's an exercise, just like you're visualizing your goals that just gets better with practice. And each opportunity or each interaction is just a further opportunity to understand, right? And that doesn't mean just in the beach body world. You know, even when I'm, for example, here in Puerto Rico, right? I'm recruiting people who come to our career fair, but I'm telling my Uber driver, I'm telling my restaurant guy, I'm talking to the bartender, you know? And that's kind of like when we're genuinely living that, we don't have to just be sharing our journey on Facebook or on Instagram or when we're in this setting, you know, when you're living that and there's things that are going to come up that people are going to ask you, you know, swag, walking around with my shake, you know, what, Hey, Shannon was up at five o'clock this morning working out. Like when they got, when I got the text, Hey, we're going to breakfast. Oh, I've already had breakfast because I have my workout in and there's that conversation interaction, right? So, so get creative and look for all those outlets to share because you're just sharing genuinely just being you, right? It's going to come up. And then I love to, when you're thinking about every interaction as an opportunity, think about what information could help you in that next interaction in a certain sense. So, you know, some of the things that I think about is when someone reaches out to me, why me versus somebody else? Why now versus another time? Um, you know, what, what's changed? And that's, that's not an insulting thing to ask someone, right? It's not, it's not, it's not a taboo sub subject to say to somebody, you know, hey, what, what made you make this decision now? Or, you know, do you mind sharing with me what, what drew you to reach out in this point? Because that feedback is going to help you to continue to, to grow and, and evolve with your tribe. Last but not least, I'm a fast talker. I'm sorry, Danielle. What time is it? I just fly through that. Okay. <laughs> so secret sauce. Um, this community is my secret sauce, a hundred percent. Um, you know, there's, there's, if you, you can, you can try and find, let's see, how do I phrase this? For me, you know, no matter what, when I looked at other outlets or looked at other things, there's that, there's that home sense for me in this community. It's a place that's safe to come back to. It's a place that's safe to share in. It's a place that you can put out that account accountability when you need it. Or also throughout that, oh, I need some, I need a few weeks and no one's going to judge you for that. Right. But there's something about that open door element that for me was so comforting no matter what place in them journey that I'm at. So when you do have somebody, you know, maybe divert from their path, as tempting as it can be to be like, oh, whatever, I'll see you later, talk to you never, you know, try and keep that door open as much as you can. And I don't mean like harass them every two days. I mean, you know, genuinely, how you doing? What's going on? You know, it, it doesn't have to be a planned thing necessarily, but I think if we, the more we can empathize and put ourselves in other people's shoes, the less resentment and almost 
personal hurt you feel when maybe their actions aren't along the lines of what they initially expected, right? Because you can, you can realize and understand that that's about them. That's about their journey. That's about their time and what's going on. And you just have to learn how to be there for them in that moment. And so if that's maybe not as present, then they need some space. That's great. If it's, if it's whatever it is, I think as long as you're keeping that open door policy about it, it's really what draws people to this community, at least for me personally. And that accountability element, right? That's what we see that thrives with our challengers. And this is a space where you know we're all here to support each other so we can throw out what our goals are if it's personal or business or whatever it is right and we that, for me personally that accountability really drives me you know I know hey Danielle's at Disney working out I better as I can't not work out in Puerto Rico right you know if York texted me today well if you're gonna work out at 4 a.m. I'm gonna be at the gym you know so it, it when we give each other that accountability and we it, it, we are so good at talking ourselves out of things, right? I can come up with any excuse in my brain anytime. But then when I have to say the excuse out loud and imagine how Danielle's going to hear it or whoever's going to hear it, I'm like, ah, crap. Ah, I can't, that's not going to work. <laughs> so, so, you know, use that as a tool. Bring whatever it is to this forum because that's what we're here for. And share, 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 right? When we're talking about growing perspective because of the interactions we're having with our challengers, we can get that same information with each other. So the more we share with each other what's going on, the more we can relate to everyone else, right? And it's a place where we have the ability to fail and learn from others' failures. It's, it's like a big safety net, right? And that's such a great thing to have in life. I can't show up at work and be like, well, I failed today. You know, they're, they're fine with it though. I, it's fine. You know, like I could get fired. I, there's things that are gonna happen, right? You know, if you fail in this community, we're not going to kick you out. You know, we're all going to learn from it. We're all going to move on. And you're not alone in that sense. So, um, you know, that's, that's for me, what was big on the roller coaster element, that the ability to kind of come back in and out with that. And hey, all boats rise with the tide, right? So the more we all put into this community, the, the more it all just rises us up. So I think that you know, while we all can have a competitive streak in the fitness world, it's great to also find that competition with each other in that support system. What do you guys have for me? That's what I've got for you. Man, that was good. Does anybody else agree? Shannon's such a good speaker. Mm. And I wanted to follow up. It's so interesting that you took this route because um, tomorrow Julie Warris is doing a video on the Beachbody Champions page about like Newton's law and momentum and how you create that momentum with continuous movement. So I just really thought it was relatable to what Sh Shannon shared um, tonight. Shannon, do you mind um, stop sharing your screen? So oh yeah, how do I do that? I think at the bottom. Um, so Shannon, I wanna ask you a few questions because you know, you've, you, you've gotten to Diamond and I know a lot of people have that, but did Diamond change your life? Yes, I would say it did. I'm sorry, I'm still trying to figure out how to this. I can chat for a minute. But some of the things that I took from away away from this is no matter where you are in your journey, you share it. Like I just yeah. love that because it's going that relatability that Shannon kept talking about. It's it's so true, guys. Like the only reason I've hit Success Club for as long as I have and I've stayed through, like I've had stuff where I've struggled, like struggled hard inside of myself with doubt and anxiety and fear. And the only reason that I've been consistent with hitting those things is because I never stopped sharing. And so like if you do nothing else, like just keep sharing. And like she said, you'll get better. Yeah. But um, yeah, so... But did Diamond like change your life? Did Was it a thing that like you woke up and you're like, okay, life is magic. So Diamond was an, a very interesting experience for me. I think there was a couple different levels to my Diamond experience. Um, at first, it was that ecstasy of this is not the impossible, right? It's that, it's that if the the biggest thing I took out of diamond is like you said, if you just dive into it and do it, you, you won't even realize the things that you can accomplish. And I think that the other side of my diamond experience was 
it's, it's also not the be all end all, right? It's not like you can hit diamond and go, okay, great check. Now I'm going to sit back and just watch this all roll. Right. So I think it was, it was something that really showed me that when you get out of your own way and you just decide that maybe I'm going to do this in a sloppy manner, but I'm just going to try and do it. It, you can get there and then, but you have to evolve with those goals, right? You can't just say, great, well now I'm at diamond and everything's perfect and, and I'm never going to have to do anything again because here I am, right? Because not only is that just a, a title in the sense of, you know, it, how do I say this? It's, you know, it's a title in the sense of a rank, but it's more than that. It's a representation of lives, right? This is, we get to diamond because we've chosen to evolve and put ourselves in, in other people's lives. And that's a, that's a physical representation of that. And that's a very powerful statement, but it's also, you know, you have to continue with that momentum. And I think for me, that was, you know, a, a learning process in that, it's, it's about the journey and not just the goal. Yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Like that stepping stone mentality. Like diamond is just the beginning of the fun y'all. Like mm -hmm. Mel was asking me the other day, Oh my gosh, how do I get to that income level? And I'm like, girl, it's two star. Like, you know, there's so many more things outside of just that, that it's just a stepping stone to what you want to make your life out of. And like Shannon said, it's a representation of the amount of lives you change with your tribe. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you is what specific things are you doing now to build your momentum? Yes. So I'm, I'm a little bit of a turtle in the way I get into things. You know, I, I definitely have learned that I get overwhelmed if I try and do it all at once. So for me personally, I, I try and building block it. And I always start with the sharing because I think, you know, even if you don't have all the answers again and how you share it, you ultimately you miss every shot you don't take. You, you lose the eyes of every person you don't get in front of. So even if you're not saying the right thing, they still see your face. And, and so th there's that familiarity that you're building. So I've tried to really get back to genuinely sharing, consistently sharing, and, and really adjusting my schedule. Because for me, that's my biggest challenge is, you know, you can't try and find the time. You have to decide you want to make the time. So I've been really trying to purposely make the time in terms of, being present when I, when I plug in, sharing what's going on and learning that it's okay if that's not consistent. You know, some days I'm able to share the first three hours of my day. I don't get to drink or sit or eat or stop talking for the next 10 hours, but then I share again at the end, you know, and Hey, that's my schedule. And, and maybe that's how it goes that day, but I'm trying to be consistent with being present. And I think the more things you can succeed at being consistent at, the less work it takes as you add something else on. So for me, when I start to kind of get that almost snowball going, you know, the next week, it's not as hard for me to consistently share or plug into those times because that's already kind of become a habit. So now I can tackle the next thing, you know, instead of doing my power hour and these 10 minutes since I'm going to go for this day to really get that whole hour in. Right. And that's always a struggle for me to, you know, I don't want to be choosing between my power hour and my workout. So how do I kind of find that balance between those two? And then once I've mastered, after that, what's the next step, right? So I think ultimately, if there's something, we want to live out of our comfort zones, we push ourselves, but maybe find that thing that's a little bit comfortable enough that you can start that snowball and then it, it allow it to bring that momentum to your life. Yeah, I agree. And I love that you kept bringing it back to community because that obsession hub that we have running right now, guys, do you realize that anything that people complain about or post that they're struggling with or that they're celebrating, those are the things that our people need to hear. And so to me, that's endless post ideas in a massive group all the time because those are our people, right? Like Shannon said, we're, we're all similar. We're all connected in some way. And so if you're looking for a way to start, that's where you start. Look at what people are asking. Yeah, so true. What other questions do you guys have, Shannon, on the hot seat? I'm looking at Jordan's ads. <laughs> hey, girl. Any other questions, thoughts? Don't be bashful. What do you What do you think your biggest 
driver was that's kept you on this journey, even when you've been at the low points of, you know, coaching sure. per se? Um, it's selfish, ultimately. Um, it's those moments when you plug in, if it's to my workout or to my community, and you feel that, right? You can't forget that feeling. You, you know what it feels like when your body's in a good place. You know what it feels like when your mind's in a good place. And um, I definitely, I struggle with autopilot a little bit where I kind of, I, I'm like, well, you know, things are falling apart. Let me autopilot a little bit. And you almost get used to that feeling of a little bit tired all the time, a little bit kind of sad or a little bit lonely or a little bit of anxiety all the time, right? And, and when you have the, when you kind of have this community that gets you just to that place of feeling what that bar is like that you can set for yourself, you, it's hard to lose that memory. And for me, you know, I would hit these points where I'm like, what, what, you know, I'd sit down and kind of take that time to reflect. And that's what I wanted to get back to. I want to get back to that. I want that to be my every day. And then once I can kind of, again, start that snowball of that feeling, right? Once you have that one day where you feel like that, if that second day when you switch back, it's, it's even more intense on the opposite side. You almost shift to, well, gosh, I could eat a whole bag of candy when I was eating crap every day. Now I eat good food. I eat one piece of candy, a whole world falls apart, right? So I think that, again, it, it allows you to build that momentum. But the more you can have those genuine truths that speak to you experiences, the more you remember those. And those are the most powerful motivation. I, I, as much as I would love to pay all my credit card out, debt off tomorrow, that's not always what's waking me up in the middle of the night, you know, and, and that's going to be unique for everybody. But I, I really, my number one priority in terms of my self care is being able to listen to my body and whatever that is. And I'll be a hundred percent honest with you that that's not always what beach body's plan is, right? You know, I, right now I'm really struggling with timed nutrition, but I'm not beating myself up over that every day. You know, I'm, I'm still getting all my workouts in. I'm still getting in my numbers of containers and I'm focusing on those victories because if, if I just beat myself up over the fact that I, I can't always get that timing right, it almost takes away from all of those things that I am gaining. So don't be afraid if, if wherever place you're at is not necessarily exactly what, what's on the beach body path, because I think it is a, there's, there's opportunities when people are going to gain that from just really plugging in and that's what they need, right? They need that structure. They need that focus and that's, what's going to get them there. But other times maybe they need that flexibility. I think I rambled. Did I answer your question? Sorry. It's like a mic dropper. <laughs> well, guys, I think this was a good one. I think it's one we can come back to and listen to when maybe we feel off the journey. And I think it goes back to that first slide that Shannon said. You have to find ways to enjoy the journey, both in your business, your personal life, the, your fitness, because I will tell you, like when you hit a certain rank, it's fun and all. Like everybody loves the good Facebook posts. But why not celebrate all the amazing things that come along the way? Like Shannon, I love that you shared those um, non-scale victories of like empathy, confidence, pride. Like those are the things that we're creating in this 80-day obsession journey. And the more we can tap into that along the way, I feel like the more those moments are created in your life. So thank you, Shannon, for sharing your heart. Um, I hope we can get more of y'all on here and speaking. And, and it's so great to get some different voices. because I'm like, damn, she's a good speaker. <laughs> but enjoy your time in Puerto Rico, girl. Thanks for hopping on. I love y'all. Kick butt. You still have three days left in the month, okay? So I want everybody to go write a post on something that touched them from this call tonight. And maybe tag Shannon, shout her out something like that yep. and go, go make yourselves proud. All right, guys, happy week three. And I will talk to you later. Bye.